play a game. Why, yes. I believe we shall. Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> Live from Little Rock, it's Shane Plays Radio, Geek Talk Radio, a journey into the things we love. I'm your host, Shane Stacks. Thanks so much for joining us, whether you're listening live on 96.5 FM, The Answer, in the uh, central Arkansas area, or online via 96.5 FM, The Answer.com, or if you're listening delayed on the podcast or on Krypton Radio, I'm glad to have you as always. Got a great show uh, for you today, we're gonna we're gonna get our geek on. So get on up in here, get geeky. Zach, how you doing this on, on this fine afternoon? I'm doing great, man. You're gonna, you're gonna go see a movie after the show after the show today. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, I'm going to see a great movie called Boss Baby. Boss Baby. Mm-hmm. Zach Zach watches. You go to a lot of movies. I do. All right, that's Zach, our our hardworking producer, without whom the show could not happen. Anyway, let's get through some uh, show notes here. And then we'll get into the show. We're going to do a, I uh, haven't had a good news segment in a while just due to the format of the topics and guests I had. So we're going to get in, uh, get some news in. And then later in the hour, we're going to dig into some of the uh, not so fun news uh, from Marvel Comics that's been going on uh, recently. Uh, it's actually, in my opinion, it's been going on for a couple of years, but some of the stuff is finally coming home to roost. Um, and, and then, of course, they've had a recent thing with an Indonesian artist inserting some stuff into a comic book that was not Marvel's fault. So we'll talk about that later in the show. You can, this is live talk radio. You can call me at 501-823-0965, or you can tweet me at Shane Plays. That's S-H-A-N-E-P-L-A-Y-S. Uh, and speaking of Shane Plays, you can go to ShanePlays.com, and I've got show notes up for today's show right now at ShanePlays.com. And you can see the uh, news items that I'm going to be talking about, and then also the art, the uh, articles and whatnot uh, related to the Marvel. So if you want to know more about any of the topics or news items that we talk about today, you can go to shameplays.com. Last week's show is also up on the blog, and that's why I talked with PCI's Henry Lopez about the Arcanus, the World of Shattered Empires RPG system, and its update to 5th edition. That was a good show. Go check that out. And this show, I love talk radio, live talk radio. I love it. But the show also goes out as a podcast on the blog at shameplays.com, iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and many other fine, fine podcast directories. I also put it up on YouTube, so look for the Shane Plays channel on YouTube. And last, but certainly not least, uh, Shane Plays is also carried a week delayed on Krypton Radio. We're played on Saturdays and Mondays, a week delayed on Krypton Radio. Krypton Radio is sci-fi for your wi-fi krypton radio.com i think next week we're gonna be talking about doctor who because today is april 15th if you're listening live and doctor who returns tonight the peter the last peter capaldi season which bums me out because i like him as the doctor i'm waiting on him to get some really good scripts and stuff but we'll talk about that more next week um after we've seen the first ep- episode that that premieres again tonight or that premieres tonight uh want to welcome i have a new sponsor Little Rock Comic Con. Uh, So Little Rock Comic Con is Arkansas's original comic and toy convention. The 2017 Little Rock Comic Con is May 20th and 21st in Benton, Arkansas. Look for Little Rock Comic Con on Facebook or visit lrcomiccon.com. Admission is $10 a day or $15 for the weekend. Tickets can be purchased through Eventbrite until May 18th or at the door. 2017 special guests include Jason Font of Power Rangers Time Force, Gary Chalk, the voice of Optimus Primal from Beast Wars, Justin Nimmo of Power Rangers in Space, comics artist Timothy Lynn and YouTube personality Optibotamus, and more. Come on out and meet the special guest. Enjoy moderated panels, cosplay and cosplay contests, dealer booths, and lots of cool comics, toys, and geek culture fun. Don't forget the after party at Dave & Buster's 7 p.m. that Saturday night. After party events must be purchased in advance through Eventbrite by May 18th. Dealers and artist tables are available now. 2017 Little Rock Comic Con is May 20th and 21st in Benton, Arkansas. Look for Little Rock Comic Con on Facebook or visit them at lrcomiccon.com. So welcome. And I'm going to be doing probably a live remote from that show. Uh, Zach, as well as, you know, we're doing some cross promotion and stuff like that. So that'll be cool um, to check that out. Folks, we're about to get into the news segment. I've also got Michael Brown, comedian Michael Brown, um, who's a recurring guest, great friend of the show, um, and also, he's the host of Brain Trust with Michael Brown, which is a YouTube geek uh, 
uh, culture quiz show, the only one of its type that I'm aware of. Uh, so he'll be on here in a second. We're going to kick off the news here in a second. But I wanted to also mention uh, next week, ap- April 22nd, is Tabletop Day, International Tabletop Day, talking about tabletop games. And uh, the Central Arkansas Library System next Saturday is doing an International Tabletop Day event from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. at Hillcrest Hall at 1501 Cavanaugh Boulevard. All ages are welcome, and they'll have tabletop games, door prizes, or more. Check that out. I'm not going to talk a lot about this right now, uh, but we'll talk about it in weeks to come. The Arkansas Comic-Con, not Little Rock Comic-Con, that's May uh, 20th and 21st, but the Arkansas Comic-Con is going to be September 9th and 10th at um, the uh, State House Convention Center that was just recently announced. So lots and lots of cool cons and stuff like that. Um, I got a, uh, Zach, I got a super secret message from Michael Brown. You think you can go let him in the side hatch there? Okay. Uh, go ahead and, and hit me the, the, the uh, turn on the microphone in the, in the newsroom there, if you will. Well, there's that hardworking news team. Gotta love them. They working on Saturday. We're getting some. There's some news items. I'm going to wait till Michael's in a seat because I know he'll want to uh, comment on them. But I do want to talk about Nintendo. Nobody understands this one. Nobody gets this uh, move by Nintendo. Nintendo has discontinued the NES Classic. I have a news item uh, from Kotaku. Uh, dude, nobody gets it. This thing came out a couple of months ago, right around Christmas. It was a huge seller. It's the little miniature-looking original Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, huge demand. People love it. Hard to get one. Big seller. And uh, for some way, for some reason, they just decided to stop selling it. And uh, they've confirmed. They confirmed to IGN that. Uh, It will no longer produce many NES systems in North America in 2017. It says at least in 2017. And their uh, statement is throughout April, NOA territories will receive the last shipments of Nintendo Entertainment System NES Classic Edition for this year. We encourage anyone interested in obtaining the system check with retail outlets regarding availability. Yeah, right. Uh, eBay is about to get crazy to, to get these things. So... And a representative for Nintendo added to IGN, NES Classic Edition wasn't intended to be an ongoing long-term project. However, due to high demand, we did extra extra shipments to our original plans. This is... Okay, so as Kotaku uh, ended their article, like, so you can go to shameplays.com and check this out. They, this is how they ended their article. Given the widespread excitement, interest, and sales of the NES Classic, it only makes sense for Nintendo to stop selling it. This... It makes no, uh, nobody gets this. And then nobody, you get, you got a you have a, uh, a classic system that everybody wants. Mike Brown is in the building. Comedian Mike Brown of brain trust with Michael Brown. Go ahead and grab your microphone, turn on that red button next to it. If it isn't already. All right. Can let's say, say. Say the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy the dog. Quick brown fox. I've got over you. The lazy you're there. Dog. All right, you're there. We're both wearing cool hats today. We are. I've got my uh, fedora on, and you've got your floppy. It's not a fishing hat. What is that? What it's would a you bucket hat. It's, it's a, bucket a bucket hat. hat. But I bought this at the Washington Monu- Monument in well, Washington cool. D.C. back in the '90s. So it's a monumental hat for you. It's a monumental hat. All right, cool. We're just talking about inexplicably for some reason Nintendo has decided to stop selling these mini NES classic systems. Uh, it's got like a ROM in it with like 30 classic NES games. Yeah, I've seen those. Just for some reason, they're super popular. Yeah. They're, we're just not selling them anymore. Nobody gets it. What? As Kotaku put it, they said, given the widespread excitement, interest, and sales of the NES Classic, it only makes sense for Nintendo to stop selling it. So well, I don't of know. Course. Yeah, that's the only news item that I've, I, I've saved some other stuff because I wanted you and Zach to be in the room. So welcome back to the show. Uh, thank you for having yeah, me. Thank you for bringing me back. Yeah, I, no problem. I was told on the way in that the shows that I'm on are some of the best shows you do. Zach loves some Mike Brown. I love some Mike Brown. Right on. But man. Zach definitely loves some uh, the Mike Brown. Yeah, you got, Woo. you got, you got it. You got it, man. Whatever it is, you got it. So um, ah, nice. Yeah. So uh, go ahead. I, I love the. I I never can say it right. The little elevator pitch you have on what Brain Trust is. Brain Trust. Yeah. My game show is YouTube's only live audience geek-centric pop culture trivia game show. Period. Period. On YouTube, 
out of all the millions of things right. that are on YouTube, we're the only thing You're that's it. like what we are. You so, don't even say that we know of anymore. You're nope. convinced on that. Yep. Because right. I have not been proven wrong in almost two years. All so. right. Well, I'll tell you, I've got a new sponsor for the show, Mike. Okay. Uh, and that is Little Rock Comic Con. Ah. And we're doing some cross promotion. And you're going to be there. I am. Yeah. I, uh, our show's going to be at Little Rock yeah. Comic Con that Saturday so morning May uh, 20, at 11 a.m. Yeah, May 20th and 21st. Make yeah. sure to go on Saturday morning so you can see uh, Brain Tra- I'm pretty sure I'm going to do a live remote from oh, smooth, Little man. Rock Comic That's Con. That's great. So. It's going to be our Futurama edition that, oh, cool. on that uh, on that show. So it's going to be nice. It's going to so be So hopefully your 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 guys won't do too much of a bender the night before. Nah, so, you so hear, I, see what I, he did there? I'm sorry. That's I'm nice. sorry. Okay, anyway. It's good stuff. Moving on. Um, yeah, but I've been working with Mike over at Little Rock Comic Con. He's a cool dude. Yeah, he's so, a great guy. Yeah. I called him up. He's like, yeah, we'll do some cross promotion. Uh, like, works for me, bro. He, hey, yeah. man, he's the only game in town this summer. Uh, well, we've for got a while. this now. Oh, that's true. Yeah, we, the ninth, the Arkansas yeah. Comic Con, yeah, which I'm barely going to mention them because they're not a sponsor. Right. But just in the interest of loving on geek culture, I'm going to make sure people know about them. Yeah, but that's not for months. That's in the September. So, uh, and I'm also speaking of September, I'm doing some work with SpaCon again in Hot Springs, but let's move on. Nice. Okay, I saved this news item. All right, let's do it. And we're going to plow through these news items. I can't wait. Because I want to talk about Marvel Comics. Totally. But I haven't had a good news segment in a while, so I've got a lot of news items here. So we, if this may be like the, uh, what do they call it, the bonus round or whatever? We're lightning like, round. Lightning round. So I saved this because I know that you and Zach are both going to want to say something about this. Yesterday, of course, dropped the new Star Wars The Last Jedi teaser trailer. Mm. Teaser trailer don't mean what it used to. Teaser used to be you got like 10 seconds. A little something. And now you got like a two minute. But yeah. they still did a great job of by teasing. not telling yeah. you anything yeah, of what's going on. The no, out of zero you. context yeah. whatsoever. I even wore my Star Wars I shoot that hair shot shoot first shirt. Sure. You know, I recently watched uh, the special edition of A New Hope for the first time in a while. Okay. Because obviously Rogue One, and you know, I want to go watch it oh, again. Oh, yeah, and absolutely. It's and I've watched Rogue One three times now, and it gets better and better and better. And I liked it to begin with. Yeah. Fantastic movie. Yeah. Um, in fact, own- I think it's the last thing we talked about when I was here. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. We went through all that, uh, just, just geeking on it. Totally. Uh, so I watched A New Hope special edition, and the only two things that bug me about it from anymore, it's been a long enough time now. Mm hmm. That uh, the only two things that still bug me about it are, of course, the hand not shooting first debacle. Thank you. That's because, why I have the shirt. Well, on. it changes the whole nature of the character. It does. Right? It's not just a minor thing. You you Because Han Solo went from being a scoundrel who would shoot you rather than talk to you to a hero of the rebellion. It, That's it, a great character it, arc. It took away the right. entire progress of the character, right. I think. Right, exactly. Uh, and it's just ridiculous. It just doesn't make any sense at all right i'm greedo i'm two feet from you and i'm gonna shoot the wall it just makes yeah no sense so right. um the other thing that bugs me i really hate the scene where they uh where they have han talking to jabba before he's getting on and walking across his tail and yeah. all jabba the hut is not a buffoon character not a uh you know slapstick like i'm gonna i'm gonna put my finger in your face and walk on your t- you know what i'm saying it yeah. just doesn't make sense yeah and originally when they filmed that it was a human character and they digitally but they should have left that out the whole thing yeah i agree yeah. and uh and then just throwing the little easter egg at the end by having the little uh three second or two second cameo of boba fett just kind of doing right. the uh, uh, helmet mug to the audience. Right, just standing there. Yeah, that's some fan service right there. Oh yeah, it yeah. was. Uh, it was useless. It yeah, was absolutely totally. they useless. Should've. Okay, the whole anyway, thing was gone. Anyway, so real quick, Star Wars: The Last Jedi trailer. Okay. Zach, what excited by the trailer? I I was impressed, and um, I mean, I just love the last words by Luke. Yeah, when he's like, "Now I'm going to throw this is a trailer, so I'm going to spoil it." He says, "The only thing I know for sure is that." The Jedi have to end. Yep. That's all, you know, that's what mm-hmm. it ends on. What did you think, Mike? Um, well, again, having, ze- having, yeah. having seen all these scenes with yeah. zero context. Right. Um, uh, my my first reaction is, explain yourself, Skywalker. Right. Yeah. You well, know, of course they did that. Yeah. Too. yeah. Well, the Jedi are going to have to, quote unquote, become something else. Right. I Maybe mean, the, that's it. Maybe like they have the, to evolve into a different The force thing. users of the light side concept obviously can't go away right unless somehow the sith go completely away right or the the knights of ren or whatever they are now whatever they are yeah yeah so okay can't spend too much time on it 
I thought it was interesting. The only scene that you saw of Finn was him in the life support chamber or whatever. That was um, it. He's supposed to be. I do know. Yeah. This is. I mean. Yeah. We're. I don't think we're necessarily getting into spoiler territory here, but because it's uh, right. it's pretty widely publicized. But um, the the uh, Bantha tank. Yeah. Uh, back to tank. Back to tank. Yeah, now the to. Bantha was the big. Yeah, Bantha beast. is the big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the the back to tank that Luke was in 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 uh, uh, Empire after he got attacked yeah, by the right. Wampa. Um, they have improved some technology in the okay. Star Wars universe, and now Finn will be in a uh, back to suit. And apparently, uh, he gets hurt really badly, and he is he uh, he is going to be in a bat. He, well, that, he was hurt pretty bad at the end of force awakened yeah i mean uh kylo went up his spine yeah with a lightsaber yeah 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 so that's so yeah. so that is i want to say kind of a little scene pre uh back to suit okay so he's gonna be he's gonna be recuperating okay through most of well I, i'm films. a big finn fan me too i'm a big out of out out of all of the characters i mean i like ray I like Poe. I like, but Finn is probably my man. From really? The, from the yeah, I like Finn a lot. I'm a I'm a Poe guy. Not, I like Poe. Not, not that I'm against Finn at yeah, all. I but Poe. I, I love I love yeah. I love Poe. I, I love yeah. the way they portrayed his yeah. No, he's good. Uh, piloting skills. Well, and, and you don't know from the cutting from the editing, but the trailer makes it look like his special X wing goes, goes bye bye. Yeah, but you can't tell. It's editing. Okay, so I hate to move on, but we got to move on. Uh, um, okay, we could spend the whole hour. We on could that thing. Dwight Schrute. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, Rain the, Wilson. Rain Wilson himself is going to play Harry Mudd in the Star Trek Discovery series. Fun. Nice casting. Okay. Nice casting. Of course, Discovery is set roughly 10 years before the original series. Okay. Okay. So, and there's a lot of, you know, the, the typical geek anticipation and geek rage. At Did all we news. decide that this series is taking place in Star Trek Prime? It is. is, that, is that it is going Prime on? because Kelvin... Uh, or or uh, new track or whatever yeah. happens. Uh, f- I think after next generation is when the divergence happens. Okay. So yeah, anything before after next generation ended <laughs> is all prime universe. Okay. Right. So uh, at least that's how they're doing it. Yeah. This is in the prime universe. So Got it. Um, I, my feeling is movie wise, it's going to be JJ Trek. TV wise, it's going to be. Well, I don't know forever, but for the time being. For OG and, then T- Trek. and the interesting thing about JJ Trek is, or the Kelvin timeline, as some people call it, mm-hmm. I think that's what they want people to call it. <laughs> Instead uh, of JJ Trek, because right. I really it's like JJ that. Trek to me. Yeah. Uh, it'll always be J- The <laughs> movies are fun and okay. Yeah. The comic books are great. Okay. I love the JJ Trek comic books from IDW. Right yeah. I've so, not read any. Yeah, of those. they're good. So, anyway, so I think that's a nice casting move. And you know who's going to be like the main character from Discovery? is Sasha from The Walking Dead. Okay. Yeah, so she's like, and for the first time ever, like the main character is not a captain. She's like a lieutenant or something like that. Oh, she's going to mm-hmm. be the pivotal yeah. wherever but all there the are, show is built evidently, around her. Evidently, but there, are, there is a captain and there's this and there's that. But uh-huh. So it's going to become more from a junior officer perspective. So uh, also, and I'm calling, I don't think so on this right now. <laughs> so, you know, they launched Fox... Well, Fox, a lot of Fox affiliates picked up Next Generation because Next Generation yeah. launched as a uh, syndicated, show. syndicated show, but mm-hmm. a lot of Fox, my Fox station in Texas picked it up. Right I'm on. from Arkansas, folks, but I went to high school in Texas, okay? <laughs> but I'm an Arkanoid, okay? He is, he is. I'm an Arkanoid. Vouch, I can vouch for Shane so, uh And then, of course, they used Voyager to launch the UPN network. Yes. Right? So CBS is doing this all-access thing where... There's going to be, you pay 10 bucks a month or whatever, and you can watch all these TV shows online on CBS All Access. I blame Viacom. Right. Well, so they're going to, the first episode of Star Trek Discovery is going to air on CBS. Everything after that, you have to subscribe to All Access. All Access. Which I can tell you right now, I'm not going to do it. Me either. So, I'll never see it. Yeah. So they think that All Access, that Star Trek Discovery is going to get All Access to 4 million subscribers. I don't see it. I don't know about that. Yeah, I, I could be wrong. But yeah, I don't. See I'm, it. I'm, I'm sure they're going to get a bump. Yeah, in subscriptions, but it, it better just be for that do, yeah. one show. Well, they're also they're also changing the nature of the show, so it's not episodic where you interchangeable episodes. Yeah, it's like one. Oh, it's going to be serialized. Yeah, because right, they yeah. want people to 
you know, they there ain't no moss on them, right? Right, right. You know, so, anyway. so are they going to still be dropping them once a week, or are they going to just like throw that. the yeah. whole se- no, season No, I think up. it's going to be a... I mean, if I'm trying to get people to pay access, I ain't dropping it all in one. I'm going to stretch that I'll pay out. 10 bucks, watch yeah. the whole season, and, and then, then drop, pull the plug. Right, yeah, yeah so we'll you're see. You're right. I, I kind of feel bad for... Zach is in there clapping. I kind of <laughs> feel bad for the people that are putting the show together because it could very well fail or underperform because of the venue that people have to watch it on. Yeah. Right. So we'll see. Now here's some cool news with star Trek. Okay. You remember the X in the, and that there was a, the star Trek discovery to get access to all 4 million describe subscribers was from trekmovie.com. The Dwight Schrute slash uh, rain Wilson reviving Harry mud on discovery was news Arama. The Nintendo story, of course, was from Kotaku. And then go to YouTube, folks, if you want to watch the Star Wars teaser trailer, if you haven't already. Mm. Now, here's some cool news. This is from Quartz, some site called Quartz. It's a new site. You remember the X Prize that said the first people that get themselves into space under their own power win X million dollars? Yeah, yeah. Well, the X Prize gives out prize money for different things. And a few years ago, they like we, we've got money for a tricorder. If you can, if you can come up with a tricorder device, then uh, we've got a prize for you. And they've given out uh, for the first time in the history of the X Prize, they've split it because two groups have come out with tricorder type technology. And by tricorder type technology, they mean a medical device that through sensors can diagnose you of oh, stuff. Okay. It can read all your whatevers. Sure. You know, the little salt and pepper shaker that <laughs> McCoy always had. Yeah. Right? And it, it, it reads your stuff. So there, there are two teams. One team got the lion's share of the, um, uh, ba- uh, a team led by Basil Harris, an ER doctor with an engineering doctorate. Uh, and his brother George Harris, a network engineer, took home the grand prize. They got two point six million with the aim of helping them turn their working concept into a real product. And the runner up, a team led by Chung King Ping, a doctor and professor at Harvard, uh, and backed by Taiwanese electronics manufacturer HTC, was awarded mil- a million. Okay. So they're like, hey, we think you've got good stuff here. Here's some money to take it further. Mm-hmm. And the both teams used a mobile device and a series of connected sensors to measure a range of vital health indicators with ease. So, um, huh. yeah, so cool. That's fun. Star Trek continues to inspire technology. I'm telling you, folks, the first time I saw a flip mobile phone, oh, I'm yeah. like, somebody watched some Star Trek. Well, the first time I walked into a grocery store and the doors opened yeah. automatically, <laughs> is uh, yeah. that was kind of a yeah. thing. So That was it. Yeah, exactly. So, all right. Uh, trying to think. We're going to get through a couple more of these news items, and Let's then and then uh, we're going to take a break and get to the uh, the Marvel stuff. All right, I'm gonna I'm just going to nail these real super quick. According to IO9, Josh Brolin is going to be Deadpool Deadpool 2's Cable. Yes, there was a big name I can't remember who it was who uh, it was floated yeah. for a while that yeah. it might be Pierce Brosnan. Yeah, no, I like Pierce, but I don't think I want him. I as think Cable. it was uh, Michael Shannon. Yeah, I think Michael he was Shannon. In yeah, Michael Shannon. Michael yeah. Shannon. When when they announced the Josh Brolin casting for real, right? Um, I did see on Twitter uh, a uh, a gif of Michael Shannon, a clip of Michael yeah. Shannon, like in, yeah. from a movie where he was freaking out and throwing yeah. stuff all over the thing. Because he's not Deadpool. Yeah, I mean, Cable. The, the 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 news was broken to was, Michael and, Shannon, and, and of course, Cable is a futuristic. Uh, mutant cyborg kind of thing that he teleports i, f- I forget what he goes he goes to like slideways or something like yeah. that but he's he's like a hardcore terminator but he's got more of a heart of gold than a terminator well he's got part human part human but mutant he's human but yeah him and deadpool in the comics play off each other perfect it's yes. like abbott and costello it's so, like yeah. the lethal weapon of superheroes. yeah exactly so this should be good next thing and this is interesting to me marvel's new wolverine in the comic books is Logan's son, but it's not Dokken. I think he's Dokken is his like kind of evil son or or walks the dark path kind of son. Okay, this is his son from the Ultimate Universe that somehow came over to the Marvel Universe mm. and and has no memories. So you know, it. I I don't know. <laughs> How can we have Logan without it being Logan? Because <laughs> Logan's dead. It's his son with no memories with the exact same powers. From an alternate universe. The exact same powers. Yeah. 
And no memories. And no memories. <laughs> just like we used to have. Exactly. Have your cake and eat it too. That's right. Only in comic books. Hitting the giant reset button on Wolverine. Yeah. And this I like. Uh, I'm actually really excited about this. Joss Whedon is going to direct a Batgirl solo movie. I am excited. I am excited so about down that. with that because I like Batgirl as a character. And I like Joss Whedon, as, and he knows how to do superheroes. Totally. He knows so, how to do female yeah. lead right. strong characters. Yeah. No, I mean, he's good. Reed Buffy. That's right. all I'm saying. Well, and that, uh, tack that up on the bulletin board, because we're going to pull that back out in the second segment of the show. Right on. Because uh, Marvel is saying, people don't want female-led books. I, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> No, you can do strong females. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And it'll sell. Okay, and then finally, the Wonder Woman movie is on track. This is from CBR.com for an $83 million million U.S. opening. Pretty big. Conservative, but okay. Yeah, and then uh, they're, they're, they're saying likely finished domestic theatrical run with about $225 million. That's from CBR.com. I think they're lowballing it. You think they're, they're, they're well... Honestly. But those numbers are good if that's They're what great. it is. They're great. Yeah. They're great numbers. But I I, I think Wonder Woman's gonna be big. I think Wonder yeah. Woman's gonna want I think we're gonna yeah. see a lot of Wonder Women at yeah. Halloween. Wonder Women <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Right? Yeah. I think we're gonna see a lot of Wonder Woman outfits that uh, come Halloween after right. that uh that movie is released. I'm I, looking forward to it. I'm excited right. about it. I gotta wrap us uh for the news segment, we had an extended one there, but I got to go ahead and get us out of it. By the way, Screen Rant brought us the the news item about the new Wolverine as Logan's son. Okay. So, anyway. Okay. What they're going to do is, Mike, Talk they're going to go me. get, because Wolverine's covered in adamantium. They molten adamantium and he's dead. Yeah. They're going to go cut the brain out of old man Logan and they're going to put it in the sun. And then you're going to have Wolverine again in his own son's body. Ew. Dude, that could happen. It's it, comic. Uh, yeah, sure. Of course it could it totally can. could happen. It totally could happen, man. All right. Yeah. We're going to get to a break. When we get back, we're going to talk about Marvel Comics. Unfortunately, some news that is not so good. Uh, we come back with Michael Brown of Brain Trust with Michael Brown on Shane Plays Geek Talk Radio. Comic book lovers, visit the wildstars.com today from the mind of author and comic book industry expert michael tierney it's not just a comic book it's a comic book novel the wild stars is sci-fi and so much more learn the explanations behind ufos and space gods this isn't the twilight zone this is the region of the milky way galaxy known as the wild stars we guarantee you've never read anything like it the complete comic book novel took 20 years to tell with one reviewer noting, the story of the Wild Stars stretches ambitiously across space and time, from small town murders to the destruction of planets, with every event given multiple layers of meaning. If you haven't read The Wild Stars, you're missing out. Visit thewildstars.com today. The die is cast. Plunge into worlds of fantastic adventure where dragons lie. And the undead stalk the shades of your mind's imagines. Where creatures of legend plunder wealth through the horror of their passage. Monsters grim and foul hold the ecstasy of gold and the renown of glory. All this and more awaits you and your friends in the unlimited, fantastic world of the Castles and Crusades role-playing game from Troll Lord Games. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy today. A rules-light, adaptable game that has stood the test of time. Twelve years in constant publication with no new additions, Castles and Crusades is the original easy-to-play attribute check system. Join us and unleash your imagination. Visit your friendly local game Game store or trolllord.com to get your copy of Castles and Crusades today. Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as $1 an episode? Simply go to patreon.com slash Shane Plays. Hey, welcome back to Shane Plays Geek Talk Radio, a journey. Into things we love, I'm joined by comedian Michael Brown of Brain Trust with Michael Brown. Give it, give, throw that elevator statement out again, Mike. It's YouTube's only live action pop culture geek centric trivia game show. 
uh, YouTube.com slash Brain Trust Show. Subscribe and, today. And you'll be at Little Rock Comic Con yes. on the 20th, I think. Saturday. Yes, that's and right. Sponsor, Shane Play sponsor, Little Rock Comic Con. Okay. So, folks, remember this is Live Talk Radio, 501 823 0965. Or you can tweet me at Shane Plays, S H A N E P L A Y S. And the show notes for today's show are up on shaneplays.com right now. So, all the news items we talked about before the break and then uh, the stuff we're about to talk about is all up there. If you want to know more, so uh, this is a Michael. This is a big topic, and is we've only got twenty something minutes to hit it. So let's do it. Uh, but I, I, what I want to do is I want to start out with the most recent news, get through that, and then move on because because the most recent news, I think Marvel did the right thing. Okay, right? They <clears throat> uh, now we're talking about Marvel comics. Comics, yeah, not Marvel movies, not Marvel TV or anything oh. like that. Okay, okay, so. Uh, most people probably know by now, but just in case they don't, uh, there was an artist who inserted some uh, religious slash political messages into the X-Men Gold number one. I heard about the okay. X-Men Gold number one controversy. Right. So I wasn't here, sure what the details were. Here's what happened. Give it to me, Cole. This one I don't, this one I do not fault Marvel at all. They they were like, well, this is what happened and we've got to deal with it. So... Uh, and, and the link is up on, uh, in fact, they've, they've already dealt, I saw a news article today where they've already corrected the digital version and the, uh, the print version will be, you know, corrected soon. Now, uh, and of course the original version with the controversy is selling like hotcakes, right? Cause oh, that's sure. That's and in fact, uh, Joshua Heffy Huffington, I was, he was on the Dave Ellswick show Thursday with myself mm -hmm. and, uh, comics artist Mitch Breitweiser, and we were talking about this. And oh, I, I I've met it. Mitch. Yeah, Mitch is a cool dude. Yeah. Uh, in fact, folks, uh, I went on the Dave Ellswick show Thursday talking about a lot of this, and Dave and 96.5 FM The Answer have said it's cool for me to push that out as a special podcast. So I'll, I'll push that conversation out with Mitch Breitweiser um, soon as a podcast in addition to this show. So the Bleeding Cool, and, and there's other places that reported this, but Bleeding Cool reported like last weekend, mm -hmm. Marvel artist Ardian Saif hid anti-Christian and Jewish messages in this week's X-Men comic. Okay. Now, comics are also known for social commentary. Okay. Yeah. That's not the issue here. Okay. What the artist did was, without Marvel being aware of it or without the writer being aware of it, put a bunch of stuff in the background art with his own personal ideology. All right? right. Including, um, like, uh, Kitty Pride is Jewish. Yes. Okay. So uh, there's a scene where over, like, you just have to see the perspective of the comic book. Over one shoulder of her, it says jewelry, which Jews and some people think right or rich and da da da. Yeah. And on the other side, it says two twelve, and and that's like on a on a awning of a store. Two twelve is a callback to this Indonesian uprising uh, that happened like a year or two ago. It's a bit. It's almost remember the the Arab Spring mm -hmm. kind of thing. Well, it's Indonesia. It's a, it, it involves uh, like a Muslim protest. All right. Okay. Uh, and yeah, explain this to me because I only heard of this yeah. uh, in an ancillary fashion. Right. And then there's another scene where Col they're playing baseball and Colossus is up to bat and his shirt has a Muslim verse on it. And that verse basically says, don't have non-Muslims as your friends or leaders. And a big part of this 212 outrage and stuff that's going on is because that area of Indonesia has a Christian governor. Okay. okay. The long story short is people have stuff that they're concerned about in life. I have stuff I'm concerned about. Sure. This guy has stuff and he's, you know, he's, uh, this isn't about him being a Muslim. This is, he's an Indonesian Muslim. He's very open about that. This is about him inserting this stuff into his employees or employers product. Right. Yes. So it came to light. And it even came to light, like on on Facebook and social media. He was bragging about it. He was sending messages to his friends, like, "Hey, make sure to see this and all oh, that." Oh, really? Well, it caught up with him. Okay. And people said brought it to their attention, and within a week, Marvel clamped down on it. He's fired. He's that was gone. my that was my first question. Yeah, he's gone. And he basically posted, you know, my my career in comics is over, and did it, and you know, he Absolutely. said some other stuff. So no one will touch him with a ten yeah, foot cattle. Not a mainstream. No. Yeah, not a mainstream. No, he can self publish right. all he wants. Because what he did was he used his employer's stuff for as his a own agenda. Yeah, as yeah, a medium and for it could have very much hurt Marvel. Yeah, especially because Marvel's under fire for some other stuff right now. Okay, so I don't. 
Marvel, I'm like, that's, you know, you handled it. Now, uh, you know, Mitch Breitweiser went into some stuff on Thursday that he's upset with Marvel that there's a lot of local talent in America. Yeah. That, and Marvel is purposefully going out and recruiting people from all over the world. I kind of have to agree with him on that. Yeah. And, well, it's also, he's like, not only are we getting artists who maybe do or don't understand your core audience, but also it's like the IT thing. They're working for 10 bucks an hour when yeah. in America, you know, so, so yeah. he brought up, anyway, you know, I'm, as you know, uh, outside of this show, Michael, I can be pretty politically vocal, right? Yeah. So I'm not against that, right? And, mm-hmm. and a Muslim or a Christian or an atheist or a Jewish person or a Sikh has every right. But what he did was disrespectful and dishonest. And he, you know, used uh, a beloved comic book to a lot of people to further his own stuff, got nailed for it, and he's gone. I agree. So I don't lay that at Marvel's feet at all. I would have to uh if uh, if i was editor-in-chief if i was mm-hmm. king of the world uh, if of uh, marvel comics and this happened and right. unbeknownst to me i'm finding out about it ha- you right. know after the fact well after the fact let's not forget that comic books are drawn written and drawn months in advance right. before printing so right i have i would have to ask who is the editor right. and the assistant editor on these well, comics? I feel like the, the references were so obscure. Maybe. Yeah, that you wouldn't know. I don't know. Maybe. I wouldn't have caught it. It's one of those things people had to point it out. Well, now, sure. Now, Colossus's t-shirt, that's the one thing I may it's have said. Blatant. What is that? Yeah. Because yeah. it looks like, you know, like when you see John 316, yeah, you know yeah, that's yeah. a Christian reference. Yeah. And it's kind of, you're like, that looks like a verse. Yeah. You know? Yeah, all so, right. It's, it's like QS5 colon something I, mm-hmm. i'd have to go look it up i don't but know but i would yeah. i would put maybe not in the entire blame but i right. would but i would ding the assistant editor and the editor right. of those books as well for for i mean yeah i mean yeah. surely they're not looking for anything like that and and the artist right. was probably doing it in such a subtle fashion that it clearly flew under well, everybody's think about the radar writer. think huh? about the writer oh yeah nobody's talking about the story now all they're talking about is the start the that the guy pulled, yeah, right. And comics is a you know it's it's the writer and the artist work together. I got to be honest, yeah. As as staunch as I am on some issues, I'm rather forgiving. I I think it would have been okay even to say, okay, dude, you're suspended off Marvel books for like six months. Mm. You can come back, but we're going to publish an apology from you, like in all our books or something like that, mm-hmm. right? I, one strike you're out is kind of harsh, you know. Mm. So I don't know. I would have even been okay with that. Really? I'm, mm-hmm. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, frankly, <laughs> I'm shocked that you would give him that much wiggle room right. because well, I, because given as, a, yeah. as, uh, as magnanimous as yeah. I am, you're uh, like, dude, you're gone. Yeah, <laughs> pretty well, much. I'll tell you, Mike. I've been in, I've been given a lot of grace in my life, and I've done dumb stuff. I don't even know how old this guy is. I can dig it. I've done stuff at eighteen or nineteen that if I could go back to my younger self, we were different people yeah, back then. So I don't know what I'm saying is I don't blame Marvel for getting rid of him. Yeah, he did. He deserved some sort of action, uh, you know. But if they just said, "Look, he's he's off books for like six months, and we're going to publish an apology, and it won't happen again," and yeah. da, 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 I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have had an outcry for me. And and just as a quick follow up, I I kind of agree with Mitch because uh, as a former comic book artist, the gecko. And writer myself, the gecko. That's right. Um. Uh. There are scads of talented, that are talented really. people in this in this in this country that that Marvel doesn't necessarily need to extend a hand right. across the ocean. Right. Uh, well, because comics is, is for the most part, it is an American industry. And, and absolutely. You, know, you know, if you're having trouble finding people at home or maybe say, look, we're going to do like, you know, 90 percent at home and then we'll, you know, do a program to bring in other artists from around the world or something. Uh, I don't know. Fine. Something. Some of my yeah. favorite artists, uh, there's a couple of Brazilian artists yeah. that I really enjoy. Yeah. Um, there are a couple of uh, uh, Central American artists that I, that I completely enjoy. Um, but at the same time. I I'm kind of in a self preservation, and I haven't done I haven't worked in comics in 17 years. Right. Let's go ahead and put that out there. But I um I would say that in that time I have seen so much more strong ta- talent uh to uh to that that can, that can be recruited 
that that would uh, right. that would be much easier, I think, uh, to uh, to develop uh, uh, develop the talent in your backyard. Right, that's basically that's what, what I'm saying. Say. Yeah, I mean, Mitch Mitch shared some stuff. People need to leave, listen to that podcast I'm going to put out. You know, Mitch had a, a several year relationship with Marvel doing mm-hmm. Captain America and other stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and his wife Elizabeth. Uh, now works with Robert Kirkman on a lot of uh, coloring projects, colorist projects. Mm-hmm. But he said two or three years ago, Marvel just changed. Hmm. He said it went from a great to like practically hostile. So I don't know. We'll talk about that here in a second. Okay. I'm going to throw uh, a little bit of love out to one of our sponsors, and then we're going to keep going. Some goblins are your friends. Game Goblins is Central Arkansas's premier retailer, Magic the Gathering, Warhammer 40K, board games, card games, RPGs, miniatures, and hobby accessories. Call Game Goblins at 501-224-GAME or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. That's 501-224-GAME or GameGoblins.com. Conveniently located at 1121 South Bowman, right on the corner of Bowman and Canis in West Little Rock, and staffed by friendly employees, Game Goblins has expanded their store size, and there's plenty of room for exciting inventory and tables for play space. You'll like that space because Game Goblins has gaming events every day of the week. For all of your gaming needs, I hardly recommend Game Goblins. Make sure to check out their customer loyalty program that rewards you based on your actual purchases. Game Goblins earns your business and keeps it. First-time customers mention Shane Plays and receive $10 off your purchase of $50 or more. Call Game Goblins at 501-224-GAME or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. That's 501-224-GAME or GameGoblins.com. Tell them Shane Plays sent you. Uh, and speaking of Game Goblins, yeah, one, they've re-upped for another year as oh. a sponsor. So thank you to uh, Josh over at uh, Game Goblins. So I enjoy working with him and Jeremy and Stephanie and all the others at Game Goblins. They're great people. Yeah. And then also on Free RPG Day on, on June 17th, I believe it is, we're going to have an all-day RPG event at Game Goblins. So we'll be listening to more details. And I think I'm going to be trying to do a live remote from Game Goblins on that day as well. Got to work that out. Comic book lovers, visit the wildstars.com today. today. From the mind of author and comic book industry expert Michael Tierney, it's not just a comic book, it's a comic book novel. The Wild Stars is sci-fi and so much more. Learn the explanations behind UFOs and space gods. This isn't the Twilight Zone. This is the region of the Milky Way galaxy known as The Wild Stars. We guarantee you've never read anything like it. The complete comic book novel took 20 years to tell. With one reviewer noting, the story of The Wild Stars stretches ambitiously across space and time. From small town murders to the destruction of planets, with every event given multiple layers of meaning. If you haven't read The Wild Stars, you're missing out. Visit thewildstars.com today. The die is cast. Plunge into worlds of fantastic adventure, where dragons lie, and the undead stalk the shades of your mind's imagines. Where creatures of legend plunder wealth through the horror of their passage. Monsters grim and foul hold the ecstasy of gold and the renown of glory. All this and more awaits you and your friends in the unlimited, fantastic world of the Castles and Crusades role-playing game from Troll Lord Games. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy today. A rules-light, adaptable game that has stood the test of time. Twelve years in constant publication with no new additions, Castles and Crusades is the original easy-to-play attribute check system. Join us and unleash your imagination. Visit your friendly local game store game store or trolllord.com to get your copy of castles and crusades today shame plays radio is blessed to have sponsors and we appreciate them very much however did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as one dollar an episode simply go to patreon.com slash shame plays so anyway back to what we're talking about so uh I, wh- I'm going to go back into the past a couple of years, okay. and then we're going to come to the present. Okay. So two or three years ago, I personally started noticing a trend in Marvel Comics. And I was like, man, you know, am, am I am I being 
overly reactionary or am I, you know, is this really what I'm seeing or whatever? Uh, and, it, you know, it was it was different stuff, uh, just what they were doing with the characters, the storylines or whatever. And and what it, what it comes down to is, again, comics has, American mainstream comics have a deep tradition of social commentary, okay, uh, using characters to talk about social issues sure you've you've of course had the famous where speedy becomes a junkie in right? dc comics in dc yeah. comics you've got where um uh green lantern and green arrow went across that trip across the country to hard, find the hard traveling heroes right i recommend you get the it's trade paper great back stuff and, and that's yeah. where of course uh you know hal jordan is more of a conservative and uh ollie queen the green arrow is very liberal and yeah. they, you know they're and then, of course, you've got Captain America at one point said, I, I've got to, what does it even mean to be American anymore? And he went on his journey. In fact, one time he became nomad. And so you've got a deep history of, of comics. Uh, a lot of X-Men with social commentary, right? It's, it could be argued that the entire core concept of X-Men was uh, social commentary. Social commentary yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, it was a combination of what's it like to hit puberty and then also what's it like to be, you know, gay or whatever an outcast well back in the 60s it was right. mostly a uh, uh black black right uh, what's it like to be on the fringe of society yeah right and and to protect a world that hates you and fears you or whatever right yeah, yeah. and of course when they did the x-men giant size x-men number one um bill burkeen actually called and talked to dave about this a couple of days ago they relaunched it with a, a very diverse group of characters that is a, right that is completely correct so you know, there's no, uh, I'm not against representation. I'm not against social commentary. I'm not against any of that. I'm not against, hey, we need stronger female characters. We need gay characters. We need Muslim ca I'm not against any of that mm -hmm. at all. You need to represent the society that you're in. You're ramping up a big preamble here. Do I, oh, sense, yeah. do I sense a but? Yes. Okay. I am against when it goes from social commentary into social conditioning. Or social engineering. Oh, I see. And that's where the tail starts wagging the dog. Well, example. Please. Example. Uh, okay, here's a good example. Uh, two or three years, well, a couple of years ago, they had Iceman, who has always been a womanizing kind of character. He's had girlfriends. He's had he was uh, had big crushes on Marvel Girl uh, to the point where he would want to fight, you know, Marvel Girl's boyfriends or whatever. It always established to be a, a a a heterosexual male. He was he bird dogged quite a bit. Right. He was he was he was he, was, he would get a scent and he would be a right. He would so, get a pointer. Suddenly, two or three years ago, Iceman comes out as gay. Really, I didn't even know. Oh, that. Oh yeah. See, I've been out of the loop yeah. comic book wise. I've yeah. been focusing mostly on the movie right. and TV stuff now. But uh, and, okay, so Bobby, so he comes Bobby out as, Drake is, is super gay. gay now. Right. Well. Yeah, he's gay. All right. Right? And so the thing is, this is where you <clears throat> hijack a character for a social agenda rather than introducing a character that can stand on its own or yeah. or take a character who you've never explored the romantic. And perfect example, Renee Montoya from DC Comics. Oh, yeah. Nobody knew anything about her. Yeah. And so she they had a, her become lesbian. She was, a, ba she was a blank slate anyway. I'm uh, fine with that. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Introduce strong characters that stand on their own, gay, female, whatever, mm -hmm. or take secondary characters and give them more prominence, mm -hmm. but don't co-opt existing characters. Mm -hmm. The other perfect example of this is uh, suddenly, and I understand Cosmic Cube this, and I get all that. <laughs> But right. suddenly, last year, the weekend before Memorial Day weekend, suddenly Captain America is Hell Hydra. Well, you and I talked about that, dude, last year. I haven't spent a dime on Marvel Comics since then. Okay, yeah, I'm. Well, that was my next question, yeah. actually, because I remember you being literally yeah. so upset about it that you yeah, and done. I talked about it before right. you, before we even talked about it on the radio. Right, done. I'm yeah. like done because. What and, and I didn't decide. You had a great video actually on, on my YouTube. My highest about it. rated video ever is like on YouTube, twenty something thousand. I just went berserk. Yeah, and that was not scripted. I just no, no, no. turned on the camera and started that, going. It, it felt authentic. Ripped the comic book, <laughs> threw it behind me, and yeah. memes have come out of that. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so anyway, 
Before I decided, <laughs> oh, yeah. when you make it in a meme, brother, <laughs> yeah. you know you've made some sort yeah. of impact. Something so happened. I haven't, yeah. made it, I haven't made it as a meme. Yeah. I don't know. Well, it's not always good to be a meme. I know, but yeah, still. You show them throwing a comic book behind you going, what freaking history are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe was, not be the best meme. But, that was awesome. Yeah. Man. But anyway, I will say this a thumbs up versus thumbs. It's like two to one on the thumbs up on that a lot of people seem to agree with what i said totally so before i said that's it i didn't I'm, disagree with it by yeah, the way no i appreciate that but, yeah you know i would understand if you did because you know writer nick spencer was like very concerned about trump so he even he was even quoted when it happened he's like i'm the most hated american in america but yet trump's running for president no. he's totally doing this because of the right wing of the of the what do you call it the uh neo-conservative alt-right sure that's his response to the alt-right okay okay so he said that as much himself yeah. but so i went back before i before i decided to stop buying marvel comics i went and did some research and the editor-in-chief of marvel comics right now is this dude named axel alonso okay and, yeah i know that name. right so he's like ah we got it he's like he said this a couple of years ago he said traditionally writing comics has been a hobby mm. for white guys Mm. 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 and that's got to change okay right so once he took over suddenly there's two spider-men once one is with a biracial kid named miles morales now i gotta go on record i like miles morales a lot of people do i loved miles morales in the ultimate universe yeah but i don't like this trying to have your cake and eat it too of two spider-men running around in the same marvel universe but yeah. it Fall, is what it is falling in the same multiverse multiverse trap that dc fell into right, right before in the before the 80s that they tried anyway, to fix the crisis right yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh you got a biracial kid and he's he's half black half hispanic i like Miles morales a lot thor is a white woman one of the captain americas is a black man the other captain america is an agent of right-wing group hydra miss marvel's pakistani american she's muslim and Hulk is a Korean American. Mm. Now, how could you not start getting blowback on that? But none of that stuck, though, right? No, there's still that's that's been the new norm. Oh, really? But here's the chickens are coming home to roost. Okay, okay? that was a couple of years ago. Now let's fast forward. Okay, that's yeah, yeah. yeah catch, catch me up. Because... Now let's fast forward. A couple of weeks ago, Marvel had a retailer summit, and where they talked about how things were going All right. and this this uh website called icv2.com posted what they heard and one of the things was sales are going down yeah right big surprise there i could have told you that you know and i didn't even call for a boycott i just said i personally yeah i, 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 did, I remember i right. remember so you, you you were speaking only for yourself you weren't right. you weren't leading a charge or right like exactly that. so uh so sales are going down. So they have this retailer summit. So Marvel has missed the point. Here was their official statement on it. Ready? I'm ready. What we heard was that people didn't want any more diversity. <laughs> they That's didn't, not the case. Yeah, they didn't want female characters out there. That's what we heard, whether we believe it or not. We saw the sales of any character that was diverse, any character that was new, our female characters, anything that was not a core Marvel character, people were turning up their nose against. So they missed the point. Yeah. The point is you're disrespecting established characters in 50-something years of history by trying to further a political and social agenda. That's the point that they're not getting. Nobody has a problem with, with Captain Marvel being Carol Danvers. Nobody. Everyone loves that, yeah. that character. Yeah. Nobody. The point is when you take the Hulk and suddenly he's a Korean American because we need more Koreans in comics. Or when you suddenly take Bobby Drake and say he's gay, that is the problem. This, now this is this feels like a a company wide uh, Emerald Knight. Yeah, uh, when, when they killed Hal Jordan to bring back, in Kyle when Rayner. they, when they yeah. turned Hal Jordan into uh, a villain, and the uh, incredible bl backlash that happened on that back in the 90s was incredible. Well, in this one, though, they replaced a white guy with a white guy. Well, sure. Right. But, but uh, my point is, is the core point is, is they they took a character that had already been established as being well, this Well, I don't way. like what they did with Hal Jordan. Don't get me wrong. Right. And, and I 
was in contact with the editor of Green Lantern. I remember back that at the time, dude. You were you were a card carrying member of Hal's Emerald Advancement team. Actually, he, I am. Yeah, I yeah, actually, I've seen it, the card. It, it, it took a lot for me to get that because yeah. I was a very uh, vocal uh, opponent of theirs for right. for a long time. For a long but time. but the but the mostly the reason why is because. This is never going to be permanent. This is literally a stunt. This, I mean, yes, yeah. they 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 crapped all over your favorite character, and you can even substitute any Marvel character for Hal Jordan in this respect, including. Okay, we got two minutes. Go all ahead. right. Yeah. But my point is, is um, as long as Marvel is cranking out movies with the characters, the core characters, the core characters who are who they are, and 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 have always been classically uh, uh, that way, right. and are making hundreds, hundreds of millions of dollars on these movies, um, the comics will reflect the box office, and right. and everything, well, and the ship will be righted in one way or one another. Will hope, but 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 Marvel. Is, has tried to make this the new norm. Because yeah. like I said, they're trying to... Nor when you go from social commentary into social conditioning, that's when you've hijacked the ship because you're trying to turn the... Con you know, And they're, they you want this to normalize all this stuff to... Uh, it's a, The thing with how... The thing with Emerald Knight, and we've got about one minute. Okay. Uh, that was a stunt for sales. Yes. Okay. This is a stunt at Marvel for a social and political agenda. That's where it rubs me even worse. It's not going to work. Why right. and well, it start as you see. Yeah. But my point is now I'm upset because I'm not against diversity. But now they're gonna be like, well, diversity doesn't work. Yeah, it does. No, Do diversity it respectfully. Works. Just create yeah. a bunch of new characters, man. Right. Make them popular. Right. And let me just say, all the comic book companies do this. They're all gonna take their lumps on this. But Marvel has gone off the rails the past <laughs> two or three. Two or three if, years. Seriously, yeah. that's one of the reasons why I've I haven't bought comics in forever. Is well, I still love comics. I do too. You know, but. but I'm I'm not gonna fall into that trap again. All right, Mike, we got 30 seconds. I have to do this to you. Okay, go I have the bad joke of the week now. Let's do it. All right, what do you get if a short psychic breaks out of jail? Mm -hmm. A small, medium, at large. <laughs> <laughs> waka 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 waka. <laughs> Mike, as always, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for being on. We'll have Thank you on you. again, Thank uh, you. folks. This is it for uh, Shane Plays Geek Talk Radio this week. We will catch you next time. got some stuff that would tranquilize an active volcano. Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as $1 an episode? Simply go to patreon.com slash Shane Plays.